My name is Ivy Wee. I want to share with you personal stories about the power of prayer. It was in 2006 when my husband, Louis, and I almost separated after a bout of marital problems that I first learned to cry out to the Lord for help. Louis wanted to make the separation permanent and tried to call a friend for advice on the legal process. He was unable to reach that friend, but instead got to talk to another friend who challenged us to attend Sunday service in CCF. We reluctantly tried it as a last effort to save our marriage. To my surprise, Louis actually enjoyed our first service since the lesson was about submission to authority. I, on the other hand, started crying as soon as praise and worship began. We came back and began to regularly go to services after that. That same friend then sponsored us to go to a couple's retreat. I remember that Louie and I fought heavily on the way, and I honestly would have just gotten out of the car if only I knew the way home. Despite that incident, we still attended because we had said yes to our sponsor. I remembered that one of the exercises during the retreat was to write down in one sheet of yellow paper the things that frustrate you about your partner. Louis was looking for more sheets of yellow paper while I was looking for manila paper. <laughs> Miraculously, we started on the path of forgiveness and restoration after the retreat and started attending CCF uh, Couples for D Group. Indeed, our God is a God who answers prayers. Our married life started to change little by little. And by God's grace, we just celebrated our 35th anniversary last November 8th. <laughs> Praise God. This experience also taught me to depend on God for everything. I learned to pray for all things, even the small details of my life, from parking space to traffic flow. I also learned that God answers our prayers exactly when we need it. He will seldom be early, but He will never be late. God is always just in time. This leads me to another prayer milestone. In 2013, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. My heart cried out to the Lord, why me? I questioned God as to why this sickness, and he responded swiftly in the book of Exodus chapter 9, verse 16. But indeed, for this reason, I have allowed you to remain in order to show you my power and in order to pro proclaim my name throughout the earth. I knew that whether I survive or not, the cancer would be a means to glorify the Lord. I clung to those words so desperately during my trying times. I called them my special times with God. Those moments after treatment when I would feel so weak that I will be forced to just rest and not do anything. During those times, I felt closest and dearest to God, as I know that it was only through His strength that I survived each day. I was eventually declared healed of my breast cancer after a year of treatments. Praise God. Fast forward to 2016, this year, we discovered that I had a new cancer. I questioned God for the second time. And again, he responded in the book of Job, Job chapter 2, verse 10. Shall we accept only good things from the Lord and not the bad? The doctors found a nodule in my upper left lungs, and we decided to have an operation right away to have that part of my lungs removed. Before I was to be operated on, 
I was crying to my husband and asking him to take me home. But God strengthened me and allowed me to go through the operation and cycles of treatment again. In the middle of the latest trial, I received word that my husband was suspected to have prostate cancer. Imagine my distress at the news. I prayed to God to spare Louis. Ako na lang, Lord, I said. Total sanay na ako sa cancer eh. Thankfully, God answered my prayer. After two biopsies, his suspected tumor was declared benign. Praise God. In spite of the successful lung, opera perform lung operation performed on me, the result of my PET scan showed new small sub-centimeter nodules in my right and lower, upper and lower lungs, which have to be monitored. In spite of this, I was overjoyed to learn that my childhood friends were praying for me. They mentioned that they were encouraged by my faith and joy throughout the whole issue. Because of this, I now see my sickness as a blessing rather than a curse. I do have the big C in me, but it is not cancer. It is Christ. Yes, Christ is in me. Today, I find myself being effective in ministering to cancer patients because of my experience. I stand here before you today to encourage everyone to pray fervently. I used to think that prayer was just a ritual, a monotone chanting of memorized words to please the Lord. I learned instead that real prayer is personal and between a person and God alone. I also learned to never give up on my prayers because God answers all our prayers with a yes, no, or wait. Prayer is also a means to unify towards a common goal. I was deeply touched that not only my friends, but even strangers have been praying for me. You know those forwarded text message, prayer messages that we often receive? My situation was the topic of many of these. I found myself being approached by people just to tell me they were praying for me. I urge you not to ignore those messages and not to grow weary of praying and forwarding as you are doing a great service to God and for others. One last thing I want to leave you with is a practice you may want to consider. I gave my family mason jars and post-it notes. I then asked them to write down their prayer requests and drop them in the jar. After a year, open the jar and check how many concerns were answered. It really helps put things in perspective. We can see God's faithfulness in answering our prayers. My name is Ivy Wee, and I am a living proof that we have a God who answers prayers. Praise God.